uh, I know I say very often um, to people is Pusak, like have a good time. And uh, I'm trying to imagine uh, 100 years ago, people would never say that to each other. And even my, my parents or my grandparents, they would never say that. And uh, I was talking to just to some colleagues, some fellow teachers uh, one day, and we were saying bye. And I, I often say, who's that? If it's a younger person. Uh, but to this colleague who's a little bit older than me, I thought, no, this is not a, this is not a normal greeting. Um, but I know this is this is something that I, I very often say and people say it and um, and it's kind of paired with have a, like have a good time uh, make sure that you are comfortable that you have um, everything around you is um, for, fulfilling um, so do what you want to do. Um, and things like that. So a very strong focus on fulfilling your own desires and needs. Um, and I think this is this conveys a meaning, like the, a meaning of life, um, when we say things like this. Um, and I don't know if you know about this new. Um, um, it's pretty new. This uh, uh, chatbot, uh, chat GPT. You know it. Mm. We were testing it uh, in a teacher's conference last week to see um, how, kind of to try to figure out how can we as teachers manage this if the students use this to write their assignments and um, it's with artificial intelligence. And how can we um, discern if, it is, if this is used or not? And, and uh, we were testing it with different questions and uh, one question was, um, can you motivate me to do my boring homework? And this um, um, chatbot, it had a long answer. And even this, this is artificial intelligence. But of course, it has been eating um, texts and things that uh, were written by real people. And this uh, artific artificial intelligence said, uh, you should invest time in yourself. It's never wrong to invest time in yourself. And I was always laughing because this machine was kind of um, uh, giving answer to what's the meaning of life in a way. It's never wrong to invest in yourself. Um, and it was so strange to me. Um, but also other places, and we can often hear maybe a little bit older people, they are very focused on their health, like their bodies. As long as the health is good, then all is good. That's something that people would say. So it's a very strong uh, focus on our, the, the physic, our physical well, well-being. And uh, I think it's, uh, to some people it's almost like a sport just to talk about their health and uh, and their well-being. So there are so many, like my point is that there are so many things that we say without, maybe without thinking so much, uh, but it, it tells something about what is important, what do we uh, look at as important. Uh, but I would say that if this focus on ourselves, uh, that I'm comfortable, that I'm healthy, um, that I have what I need, if we just keep this focus and we kind of dig inward, 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 we will not find gold. If, if we just keep digging in this inward direction, we will not find gold. But we will more often find um, discouragement or maybe low self-esteem or anxiety or fear or just confusion or worry um, like often we I, I know this because I've tried uh, that when I, I dig into myself there is no um, 
good and uh, steady answer or core to be found. It's, it's, it's just more unstable. It's more unstable what I can find in myself. Uh, and I have experienced this uh, in my own life, so I know what it is. Uh, and, when I, I, and when I kind of tried to do this digging in myself, inside, um, focusing on myself, and I seen that it doesn't satisfy, then it's, it's so overwhelming and, and fantastic to hear that God loves me. Um, that he really, really cares about me. That he, who is not, he is not, um, is not dependent on me, but he really, really cares about me. Um, and um, I read in the Bible that I am unique, and that I'm created in the image of God. That means that when he created me, I knew. He created us in his own image. That means that we have some likeness to God. Uh, that he put a part of himself in us. Um, and we can read in Psalm 139, Psalm 139, uh, about how God saw us before we were born. When we were knit together in our, our mother's womb. Then he saw us and he loved us and he cared for us. Um, and I can I can take the Bible and I can read this song, and it was written hundreds of years ago, but it's still written for me and to me. Um, and I can read this and I can really know that God sees me, that He cares about me. I can give you the exact. It's Psalm 139. In the very uh, first verses, it says, you have, searched, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my ly lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. So God is, he knows me and you, like all the way through. He knows all about us. And he loves us. It does. It isn't. It isn't like that. That he knows us and he, like, judges us and why things. But he knows us and he loves us. And then it says in verse thirteen, "For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well." My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. So when, when we were in our mother's womb, we were not hidden from God. He, he created us and he saw us and he knit us together. So to, to see that and to know that, that my value, it's not in me, it's not it's not something that I can find by digging inside of myself, but my value is here. It's, it, I can read it in the Bible. I can find my value here. Um, so it's outside of, it, it's given me by someone who is outside of myself. So I don't have to focus on myself or build myself up uh, to know my value. I can just I can actually just read it here in the Bible. And then to know and to read and to see that Jesus, that he was willing to die for me, that he uh, was willing to suffer um, and be tortured and to die, and it was for me and it was for you. Um, and to really see that and to realize that, that it's not just a story you hear in Sunday school, or it's not just um, it's not just a fairy tale, but it's reality. That it really happened. 
it really happened. And he died for all of our sins and he died for us and he became a curse for us so we would have to be cursed. And to really to really see that it, it's valid. Uh, and then when he was hanging at the cross that he really thought of all of us. That he at that moment that he knew us um, and that he did it for us, for me, for you. Um, and to really to see the value that he puts in us by doing that. So we could be free and and we could have relationship with God again. And, and when this all of this falls into place and you hear it and you believe it and it kind of falls into place. Um, it's it's so much that falls into place. It's so much more than the ticket to heaven. But it is also the um, my self esteem. Uh, it it's um, it's kind of he, it's healed. I don't have to have a low self esteem based on my performance, because I can have a real true self esteem based on what Jesus did for me and what I read in the Bible about how God created me, and it gives me hope for tomorrow um, and that hope is also placed outside of myself it's not a hope based on what I might accomplish tomorrow but it's a hope based on what Jesus already accomplished for me and it gives me safety and security um, because God is so consumed by my well-being by um, by my heart he is so um, attentive to my heart that my heart is healthy and I, I'm not talking about the physical heart that too but uh, the spiritual heart that he is really in invested in me as a person um, and it uh, opens up the opportunity for forgiveness for uh, being forgiven and for releasing forgiveness so that I won't have to drag a burden uh, around <laughs> with me uh, the whole life and I remember at one point in my life, uh, I forgave a person. And it was, uh, before I did so, I really, I wasn't sure if I, if I needed to. But when I did, it was as when I uh, got back from a long hike and took off my heavy backpack. I felt so relieved. Um, so to to be forgiven and to forgive, it makes life so different. It's really before and after. Um, and this opportunity, it comes with Jesus. The opportunity of asking for forgiveness and forgiving other people. And it is something that you learn when you are a, a kid that you have to ask your brother for forgiveness because you took his toy um, and that's important uh, but when it's really it's not when it's not something that your parents are forcing you to say when it, it's more than a word but it is an action of the will of your will um, and it's blessed by God then it's it's transforming it transforms your life Um, and getting to know Jesus and realizing what he did for me, it also um, 
opens up the door to get to getting rid of fear and anxiety. And fear and anxiety is something that really hinders us. And fear is a really big thing. And I think in almost every everyone's lives. And um, I didn't really know that I had a lot of fear, but I did. And um, when Jesus can help us to get rid of fear or anxiety or pride, life is so much easier to live and it's not that you get rid of all of your fears once and for all and then we're done but Jesus can help us again and again to put our fears behind us and uh, live without them and this exchange we call it the beautiful exchange uh, that we give all our trash to Jesus and he give gives all his treasures to us when we can live in this beautiful exchange uh, it makes life so beautiful and exciting very exciting but there is also something more uh, and I would like to mention that too because all of this that I said, it's so beautiful and I could spend my whole life just, um, you know when you have a caramel, <laughs> a caramel in your mouth and it tastes so good and you can just keep it there for a long, long time because it's so sweet and, and good and, and everything, this life with, with Jesus and that he loves me so much, it's something that I could just, you know, keep in my mouth for my whole life and just enjoy it. I hope you understand my picture, it was a strange picture. Uh, but there is also something more. And uh, I remember when I, uh, I have four kids, uh, and I remember when my oldest was born, uh, it was a great joy in so many ways. And one of the things that didn't really necessarily uh, had to do with him. Uh, it was just about having a baby. It was a, something that was a big relief for me, and that was that I now was responsible for another uh, person, and that the, the focus of my life wasn't any longer on myself. And that was a great relief because uh, before that I had been um, in high school and then I've been a student for five years. And uh, in that season of life you are kind of focused on yourself because you have you, you want to do your studies well and you, maybe you live by yourself and you have to think of everything like you have to do the grocery shopping and you have to cook and you have to clean your apartment or whatever, all of these things and you want to to have a career and you have to want to have a boyfriend and get married, so many things. Uh, but when I had uh, my first child and I really didn't matter that much anymore because he mattered so much more and the focus was taken away from me, I was so relieved. And I was looking at my friends and they didn't have kids yet. And I was looking at their lives and I was thinking, oh, I'm so relieved that I don't have to spend so much time just thinking about myself and making my own life comfortable anymore. Um, and I think this, to have the focus put another place, it's really healthy and it's really good. Uh, and we are kind of doing that in Kingdom Builders when we are helping others in a practical way. So when we are helping here with the practical work or when we do have done the small outreaches, uh, summer outreaches, helping elderly people, gardening, whatever. Um, it's so nice for me to see the joy in all of you when we do something for other people. And I think that is something that ma many young people are 
longing for, to do something for others um, without really getting anything back apart from a smile and a thank you. Um, so I think this is something that is, in a way, it's kind of, uh, I wouldn't say that it's lost, but it's kind of hidden, the joy of focusing on some, someone else. And God loves us so much. He loves us so much. But that is not his only focus. His love for us is not his only focus. Because if it were his only focus, what would happen then when I get ill? If I get really, really sick? Or if things doesn't go don't go my way in life. Would I then be angry with God? Would I st stop believing? Would I think that he has forgotten me? Because we all know that life can be really, really hard sometimes. Um, so what would happen to my faith when things get hard, when things get really rough? Um, would I be disappointed? If all of life and, and also the life, life with God, if it, if it just revol revolves around myself, it can wear me out. Um, because if also with God, I can have a unhealthy focus on myself. I could uh, be so focused on having uh, answers to my prayers right away. That he would guide me into my dreams, that he would lead me into my dreams right away. So it can be, it can be unhealthy. But maybe we aren't in the center of it all. Maybe we, maybe I'm not the center of the universe, even if God loves me so much. Um, there is a, um, a, well, it's a story, but it's true. Um, there were some people um, who believed in God um, and they lived in a village in Germany in the 8th, 18th century, so it's uh, 300 years ago. And they, um, they really had faith in God and they started praying. And they started a prayer meeting that l lasted over 100 years. They prayed day and night for more than 100 years. It was just a small village and uh, um, maybe 200 people. So they prayed for from the three generations, three or four generations, 24-7, more than 100 years. And they also sent missionaries. And I read about two of those missionaries, uh, two young men who had heard uh, about, this was, it was 1700, so there, there was still slavery. And they had heard about a small island in the West Indies. Um, and there was a British man, rich man who owned this small island. And he had brought 2,000 2, African slaves to this island to work. And he was an atheist. So he said, I will not have any missionary or priest come here and preach the gospel to my slaves. And if there would maybe a shipwrecked priest would come here, then I will lock him in a small house and he will not talk to anyone be before I can transport him away. Because my slaves, they will not hear about Jesus. And these two young men from this small village in Germany, they heard about this. And they were so consumed by the desire that to tell these slaves about Jesus. They, they, they were thinking, we cannot let 
those slaves die without having them uh, hear about Jesus. So what did they do? They couldn't go there and visit because that man, he, he wouldn't allow them to. So they sold themselves as slaves. They were European men, they were white men. But they sold themselves as slaves and went to this island. And they knew that they wouldn't come back because they had sold their lives. But they wanted to preach the gospel. They wanted to share about Jesus to the slaves. And why did they do it? I don't think they had focus on themselves when they did it. They had focus on Jesus and they had focus that they wanted to give him something back for what he had uh, given to them. And in, uh, in the New Testament, uh, in the uh, letter to the Ephesians, Ephesians uh, chapter 1, I'll just read one sentence when I find it. Chapter 1, verse 18. It's a prayer. And it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. So it's just this, this uh, small sentence I wanted to show you. His glorious and his, that means Jesus. So his glorious inheritance in his holy people. His glorious inheritance in his holy people. So it, it says that Jesus has an inheritance in his holy people. And that's us. That's everyone who believes in Jesus. So Jesus has an inheritance in us. It means that Jesus, he gets something back from us. It means that we live our lives to honor Jesus. That we are a reward to him. So, God loves us so much. But his focus is on Jesus. So when he loves us so much, he, his desire is to honor the Son. Jesus is the Son of God, and it's God's desire to honor his Son. He died on the cross for us. So we are the inheritance of Jesus, and God wants us to honor his Son. So, the, the goal isn't just to concentrate all his love on us, it is that too, but it's also to honor the Son through us, so that we would live our lives in a way that we would honor Jesus. So, we are a gift from God to Jesus, a love gift. So that means that our purpose in life is to live in a way that we would honor and worship Jesus through the way that we live. And to me, this is uh, this is like a, a hidden gem, like it's a, like a hidden. Something that I have to dig a little bit to find. And it, it makes life with God uh, more interesting, but it also makes it more fulfilling. Because it can be hard to answer those questions when we have a hard day. When uh, my mother-in-law, she's very sick now, and she is a strong believer. And there can come so many questions. Doesn't God love her? Why just does she have to be sick? 
and so many things, so many questions can arise. But if I keep my focus on God wants to honor his son and he wants to do it through us. So things that may happen in my life, the end goal is to honor Jesus. The end goal with everything is to honor Jesus. So at the end of history, then we will have answers to all our questions. And I'm sure that then we will see that everything that happens, happened to us, it was part of God's um, story with the end goal of honoring Jesus. If I just if I just think about God loves me period, then it can be hard when I don't feel loved. But if I can focus on Jesus and say that even in the hardship, even in the hard days, when I don't have answers to questions, when people ask me questions that I don't have answers to, uh, when I don't see the light, when I don't see the purpose, when I don't see my dreams fulfilled, all of those things. If I can focus on, I want to honor Jesus in this hard season, then my faith can be built up instead of being torn down. So that was what I wanted to share with you guys. Number one, that Jesus loves us so much, God loves us so much. God knitted you together in your mother's womb. And he is before you, he's at your side, he's behind you. And Jesus, he loved you so much, he loves you so much that he died for you. And he would do it again if it was necessary, but it is not necessary because he did it once and for all. And number two, that God wants to honor Jesus through us. So when things are good, we can with a, a full heart uh, honor and worship Jesus. And when things are hard, we can cling to the truth that we can honor Jesus even if we don't feel that things are going. God loves us so much, and his focus is on Jesus. So, some, someday, all the questions that we ask, and all the prayers that uh, we are, maybe we have waited 20 years, you haven't yet. Maybe Sina and I have <laughs> <coughs> yeah. 20, 20 years for prayers to be answered. And, um, but someday, all of this will come to a conclusion. And in a part of that conclusion will be, be that the Father wishes to honor So Father, we thank you, we thank you that you love us so much and we thank, we thank you that you desire to create everything. You didn't just want to, to be uh, among yourself, Jesus and the Holy Spirit and you, but you wanted to, to, you wanted to create, you wanted to create us. You desire us, you love us, and I thank you and praise you that you see all of us and you made us and you made us for a purpose. And I thank you, Jesus, that you died for us. And you see us as so valuable and you never forget us, you never forsake us. And I thank you also, God, that you free us from self-centeredness. You set us free from so many things, and self-centeredness is one of them. 
So we don't have to live our lives just focusing on ourselves. And I pray that when we don't see any answers to our questions, that you would point us to Jesus so we can live honoring Jesus having faith that one day we will see all our questions answered. So I bless all of these beautiful people in your name, Jesus. And I ask you that you would uh, protect us this weekend, that you would protect our hearts, and that we would um, get to know you better so we can come closer to you. Amen.